What's good, y'all? It's your boy Sean P, the Blunt Guy. Aye! And today we are back with another One Piece chapter reaction. And today we will be reacting to chapter 1057. But before I get into that, make sure you guys hit that like button. Also, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also, join the Discord. So today we are reacting to chapter 1057, The End. And um, right now, and I'm looking at this cover page. And we're still at Whole Cake Island. This is still the Germa 66 uh, in the Motionless Excursion Volume 16 Caesars Poison Gas Attack. And we see Caesar getting involved in this fight. And we see him, I guess, releasing his gas, but I don't really know who he's targeting. I'm kind of assuming he's targeting Big Mom's children, Katakuri and Oven. That's kind of what I assume. I don't, I don't know if he have a reason to attack Germa. You know, and not only that, Judge and Caesar's history could potentially lead them to actually form somewhat of an alliance. Like Caesar could see this as an opportunity to like escape whole cake with, with Germa, right? Especially since they have history, maybe judge would take Caesar along something along that line. That's kind of what I'm assuming. I think Caesar's kind of that, 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 the, that plot device, I guess we're going to call it. That's going to allow Germa 66 to escape Whole Cake Island because as we see it now, and I don't think uh Yonji, Ichiji, and Niji, I don't think they're going to be able to beat Katakuri and Oven, you know, in Whole Cake Island, especially. You know, Katakuri, I think, is above them anyway, just solo. Not like three on one, if it was them three versus Katakuri, I think it would probably be a little more even, but Oven's also helping. And I think Katakuri, Katakuri might have trouble with all three of the Vince Smoke brothers, but just two of them, I don't know, right? So, you know, I think he might be able to take on two of them. And with Oven, Oven kind of evens that, that disadvantage for Katakuri and keeps it in favor of Katakuri or Big Mom's children, right? So that's kind of my thoughts. I haven't really seen anything to suggest that Ichiji and Niji are like Yonko first commander level. All right, but I'm I'm excited to see where this is going. You know, best especially since we get Katakuri in this uh the, this these cover stories. You know, I kind of low key want to see the whole fight animated, but or not even just animated, but I would like to see a good fight like within manga and anime between Katakuri and Oven versus the Vince Smokes. But I don't think that's something we'll ever get. So it's it's a brother can only dream, man. A brother can only dream. But let's get into the chapter. All right, so we see like a, a shamisen being played. We did the bang, 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 bang. Somebody says, oh, the sky was dark as the tempest blew or Yun Onigashima. Not sure what that says, but okay. Or how to say that. Uh, and the blue dragon's bellow set every beast a howling. While in the port of Habu, sheets of autumn rain beset the crimson maple curtain. So I'm thinking this might be a song. Like somebody singing. Maybe Hiori. Probably, I don't know. This is the story of the loyal samurai vessels. Who fought bravely to avenge the death of Kazuki Odin. So, okay, it's like a play happening. You know, we see like a stage. We see uh, an audience. Some guy at a table with like the Kazuki symbol behind him. And somebody to the left of him playing like a what looks to be possibly a shamisen. They say, yo. And I, your humble narrator, will attempt to do justice to the tale. Akazaya. We begin on the evening of the fire festival. Okay, so this is pretty much the story of what happened 
being towed. We cut to the woods to Takage Port Udon. Somebody said, what? You're not going out to sea? Is that right, Yamato? They say, right. Yamato says, I've already told Luffy and his friends that I'm not going. What? What? Come on. You got to go, Yamato. You got to go, Yamato. So, <laughs> Oda with this teasing, man. Come on, bro. Come on, Oda. God dang. <laughs> and then uh, we see Kinemon. And he says, you, you're you truly staying here, Yamato? And Yamato says, is that a bad thing? And we see Momonosuke in his dragon form carrying Yamato and Kinemon. Kind of like what I predicted. I kind of knew that Momonosuke would probably fly all, fly the three of them to Luffy's location. And then... And Momonosuke says, no, it would be wonderful, but you said you had made up your mind earlier, as I assume. Yamato said, oh, that. Well, Odin started his travels by walking about the country, didn't he? I know so little about the world, just like him. So I'll follow the same path, and eventually it will take me out to sea. And then... I think Momonosuke says, my word. And you already cleared this up with Luffy and his crew? But that just makes it worse. Why must they humiliate me so? Why would they leave without a word to me? And then we kind of see a flashback of Kaido holding Momonosuke by the throat. And he says, what is your name? Your father is a fool of a lord. Who are you? I'm Luffy. We see, we see uh, Luffy. I guess that was when Luffy first met Momonosuke. So we get kind of a flashback of when Momonosuke first met Luffy and, uh, or just like a lot of, I guess, other stuff in the flashback. Cause we see the first time they met in Momonosuke's in his little dragon form as a kid. And he's like biting Luffy on the head and he says, so what if you're a warrior? I'm going to be the king of the pirates one day. So there, and Momonosuke says, bye. In that case, I will one day rise to become the Shogun of Wano, you fool. And then Luffy's sticking his tongue in Momonosuke. He says, what was that ill? And Momonosuke says, bow before me, ape. So this was like their early, their early uh, confrontation. And then we see Luffy being pinned down. I, f I forgot who, I forgot what uh, part of flashback this is. Luffy being pinned down. And he says, what are you, Momo? Just a figurehead? You're just going to stand there and cry? And Momonosuke says, I want to defeat Kaido. And Luffy says, let's team up. It's an alliance. So these are just, it's kind of like a montage almost. Just different moments. We get the moment where Kondro takes Momonosuke and he screams, Luffy. Luffy says, for such a cowardly, dumb little brat, you're just a kid with a top knot who's all talk. Find a way to survive. We'll go and rescue you. Because we're pals. That was, that was when like Kondro kidnapped Momonosuke. And then we cut to when Kaido had Momonosuke like tied up to the little, the little, not cross, it's kind of like an X, but it's like a cross. And Kaido says, I ask you one more time, boy, what is your name? Momonosuke says, Kazuki Momonosuke, the man who will be Shogun of Wano. So, you know, this was, this was just showing Momonosuke's progression. I like this. I like this. I've always said that I, 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 it's one of the things that I like that don't really get enough appreciation. You know, Mom, Momonosuke's growth, you know, like he kind of low-key had more growth than Usopp. It's just a smaller point of time as far as coming from a coward to like a, you know, a little braver. Like, yeah, he's still, he's a kid. He's 10 years old. He's not going to be a full brave warrior like his dad. But, you know, he showed that, you know, he was capable of looking at a bigger picture and not just wanting to be saved. Even though he do want to be saved, he, he understood. It got to a point where he understood that there was a bigger picture. He couldn't let his fear run him. You know what I'm saying? Even though he was scared, right? Like there's a point where he's scared and it just 
prevents him from doing anything, making any, making any good decision. But it got to a point where he was able able to look at the bigger picture in spite of his fear. You know, he he, he gained some courage. You know. A lot of people might disagree and they might tell you otherwise, but he 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 was gaining courage, you know, and even though yes, it was a, a front and an act, it takes it takes courage to act brave sometimes. <laughs> Cause the thing when Conjuro took him, he could have got killed at any moment, right? He could have got killed at any moment, but he still told the alliance to A, continue the goal, continue the mission, you know. So, you know, that, that, that takes courage. All right. So we just got finished when Kaido went, when Momonosuke did his little, I am Koski Momonosuke. So Luffy says, then go, you can fly. And Momonosuke says, yeah, go and stop Onigashima. Don't worry about Kaido. I guarantee you I'll win. And then we see, we see Momonosuke, uh, is this cutting back to, okay, I think we're cutting away from the flashback. So Momonosuke is rushing, he's breathing, he's panting hard, huff, huff. We may not have been the best of friends, but after that long journey, do I really mean nothing to you? Because you're a cold man, Luffy, I thought you were better than this. Don't mistake rudeness for independence. Am I wrong, Kinemon? And then Kinema says, you're exactly right, Lord Momonosuke, but, but uh, why aren't we flying? <laughs> They're not flying this whole time. He's just running. And he says, silence. <laughs> so Momonosuke seems like he, he still doesn't like flying. He, he seems like he still don't like flying. So maybe this is why Luffy is doing this, right? Because he, he knows Momonosuke still kind of has little reservations with some of his fears, so he's still trying to break Momonosuke out of it. That's kind of what I believe, but we'll we'll see what the chapter we get from the chapter. Kinema says, "You are now the true Shogun of Wano, Lord Momonosuke. If Luffy does not watch his words, I may have no choice but to cut him down." Okay, Kinema. Kinema acting like he. Okay, Kinema, shoot. <laughs> yeah, he says. Yes, the way of the warrior demands it. I thought you said we were friends, Luffy. And then Yamato says, you don't have to be that mad about it. He And then Momonosuke says, he, he humiliated me. And now he must pay the price. First, I'll hit him and then I'll bite him. Then we cut to Tokage Port. We see Law. He says, if we ever run into each other again out there, we're total enemies. If people die, so be it. And then Luffy says, yeah, totally. The chopper says, see you later, Traffy. The law says, shut up. Kids say, come on, let's ship out. And then we hear a, hey, wait. Nami, Chopper, Sanji, and Brooke looking out, and Zoro as well. And Luffy says, oh. Momonosuke finally caught up to him, and he says, there you are. And he's out of breath, wheezing real hard. <sighs> Yamato says, hey, guys, we came to see you off. And they said, Momonosuke, Kinemon. Yamato, you know, you know that Sanji. You you already know that Sanji with the heart screaming Yamato. Momonosuke goes back to his normal form and he rushes Luffy. He says, Grr, Luffy. And Luffy like look at shock. He says, huh? I've got you now. Or was that Yamato? Hold on, I'm kind of confused. Okay, so that's Yamato and Momonosuke both rush Luffy. And because we see Luffy kind of an endearing call to Luffy. And that's Yamato calling Luffy, and they both tackle Luffy. He says, ah, Kinema says, Luffy, what do you think you're doing? We've been with you longer than anyone, and you're going to leave without a word to us? The Shogun is furious with you. Explain yourself, Critton. And Luffy says, you're here now, aren't you? Then we see Momonosuke above Luffy with like this creepy face. Says, Luffy, this is an order from the Shogun. Is that Momonosuke or is that Kinema? So I think that's Kinemon talking, but that's Momonosuke above Luffy. And then uh, we see we see Momonosuke just break out in tears. Look, grown at grown ass Momonosuke breaking down in tears. Don't let me, don't leave me. I'll miss you so much, Sam. Please stay with me forever. I don't want to say goodbye. <laughs> 
face, bro. That face. Yo, Oda went all out with uh, Momonosuke's face on this. God dang, the detail. And then even Kinemon trying to hold in those tears. We see Momonosuke bowing to, to Luffy. It was because of all of you that I survived. It was because of all of you that I was able to laugh and smile. You avenged my father and my mother. I cannot thank you enough. I'm too stupid. I don't have the words to express my feelings, but I'm scared of what is ahead. Please, please don't go. Is that Zoro? I think Zoro said, this is pathetic, man. <laughs> he got his little smirk on him, though. And then, Mo and, and then Nami's like tearing up. You know, she, she's, she, you know. <laughs> Says Momo can't help it. He's just, he's still just a little boy. That's true. That's true. Luffy says, Usopp. And Usopp says, I got it right here. Luffy says, we were waiting to give you that. You might be bigger now, but we know who you are inside. Ha, some shogun you are, Momo. You're an idiot and a coward and a weakling. <laughs> what did he give him? Did he give him, uh, he give him like a Jolly Roger? Like the, the, I wonder if he gave him like the straw hat Jolly Roger. Because it looked kind of like a big old piece of cloth a little bit. And then he says, but I think of you like a little brother. And then it says, it's a flag. So it is It is the straw hat Jolly Roger, man. That's that's dope. That's dope. And then Luffy says, when times are hard, just remember our adventures at sea. Fly this flag over Wano. If anyone shows up causing trouble, let them see it. Bro, this is some Yonko stuff right here. This is some Yonko shit right here. Luffy, Luffy leaving his, his he gonna have his banner on a bunch of countries. Bro, that, that, now, see, now, I fully, I fully accept Luffy as that Yonko. I fully, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. All those times I've denied it and didn't rock with it. I rock with it now. And I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. So, Y'all don't get no more arguments from me. I ain't getting no more arguments from me. I'm, yeah, yeah, we, we here, we here, we here. Luffy says, they'll know that if anyone messes with my crew, they're picking a fight with us. Momonosuke says, you call me one of you? Hell yeah, Momonosuke, you, you a straw hat. You, you like official, man, he official. He was, bro, Momonosuke been with him pretty much majority of the, 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 the time skip, you know, post time skip. He straw hat, man. He crew. He kind of like Vivi, right? Like Vivi was, Vivi was part of the straw hats, a good portion of the pre time skip. Not like, not like as long as like Momonosuke was post time skip, but a good portion, like the beginning of the grand line when they met, when they met. Uh, in Laboon, I think when it was in Laboon's stomach, that's where VV appeared. Correct me if I'm wrong. We got Kinemon and uh, Yamato smiling. They say, Kinemon, Yamato, Momo, if you ever want to be pirates, just say the word and we'll come right along and pick you up. Yamato says, Yes, but we don't let weaklings on the ship. <laughs> And Momo, like, shaking his head, says, I know. Watch out for him, Yamato. And Yamato says, I will. And, and Luffy says, set sail. And Kinemon says, keep it together, Shogun. You can do it, Momonosuke, they say. And then we hear somebody in the back. They say, Kinemon. He says, yes. Someday in the future, I will surpass Koski Odin. And I'll be there to witness it, says Kinemon. I thought somebody in the background was, was yelling. But now that was, that was uh, Momonosuke talking. To Kinemon. Yamato says, me? And they say, no. <laughs> We're not talking about you, Yamato. We're talking about the real Odin. Come on now. So Nami got a little apron on. She says, all right, on to Hakuma. That's where the formal port is. So we could take the lift down. And Brooke says, what a relief. I thought we have to crash down the falls the same way we came in. Chopper says, yeah, this sounds better. Kid, he says, oh, you're going for the proper port, huh? Good idea. It's so safe and secure. Ha, ha, ha. And we see Kid's ship, uh, the Sunny and Laws ship, the Polar Tang. What is Kid's ship's name? Somebody let me know in the comments. 
just right for a couple of losers. And we see, <laughs> we see, we see Law and, and, and Luffy, their eyes are like whited out. Like they're like safe, secure, ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> I already know what's about to happen. Now it's like, hey, we can't let you, we can't let you one up us. So we're going to have to all go down this waterfall. Cause it's, it's going to be like a challenge. Like, man, <laughs> I already know. I already know. I want to say it's Luffy. He says, um, Luffy, hello. Don't listen to him. Safe is good. So I'm assuming that's either Luffy or, or Nami or that's either Nami or Usopp talking. They say, Hey captain, what's with that look in your eyes? Let's just take the regular port. Luffy says, give me the will, Jinbei. <laughs> he says, Luffy, no. Oh, my God. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I already know. They're going to have to, they're going to have to, like, restrain Luffy. They're going to have to, because, bro, this type of action is why, like, the, uh, the go and marry got messed up. This reckless action. And don't put that, don't do, don't, y'all got to, take care of the sunny so we see all three ships go over the uh, waterfall and they say don't do this please i don't want to die and, uh, we get an uh, older box that says but the charismatic lord momonosuke and kinemon recruited mighty brigands to fight at their side so i think this is still that one narrator talking to uh narrator of that play and he says they led a tremendous charge and battled like true guardian deities and we see kid law and luffy all screaming as their chips fall neither kaido the dragon king nor the great ghastly orion could compete their death screams split the sky meanwhile orochi whom all thought burned to death lived on through sheer malevolence to attack princess hiori Below, Slice, who should come to cut the beast in twain? But the second of Koski Odin's faithful followers, Denjiro. And just like the black coal of his family name, the final head of Korozumi Orochi burned to a crisp. Ba bang! With a great bellow of thunder, Onigashima and Kaido, the dragon king, plummeted to the earth. At last, the storm clouds that covered Wano for over 20 years began to clear away. But then, with the chants and festivities of the flower capital in the background, dun, hard as it may be to believe, there stood Orochi burning and baleful, and he said, The wrath of the Kazumi clan will curse this country unto his last generation. Doom. But the fair princess had witnessed 20 years of Wino's suffering. Her gaze was unwavering. We see Hiori's eyes looking as Orochi burns to a crisp. And we see Denjiro standing in between Hiori and Orochi's burning body. Denjiro says, be, be careful, princess, said Denjiro. But she pushed the samurai's arm aside. And then our princess Hiori stood her ground and delivered her verdict unto the burning Orochi. In her hand, the fan bearing the Koski seal. On her lips, the memories of 20 years. Thinking of father, mother, brother, and country. She spoke. Then the crowd starts cheering. Yo, here it comes. Say it with me, everyone. Kurizumi was born to burn. And we see her with her, her uh, fan with the Koski symbol on it. As... Orochi burns. We get a little glimpse of Odin kind of, and this kind of mirrors when Odin died. He says, Odin was born to boil, but Kazumi was born to burn. I mean, it's kind of messed up though. If you kind of think about it, it's a little, it's a little messed up that <laughs> like saying like a whole, a whole clan of family is born to burn. It's a little messed up. I, I will say that it's a little messed up. Just because they're Kurizumi, they're born to burn. So there could be some good Kurizumi out there, but hey, you're you're born to burn. Sorry. 
a little messed up. It's a little messed up. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Orochi's actions does not make a whole family line deserve. The, the actions of a few doesn't mean all of the family deserve to burn. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, it's like, it's like saying like you get a few bad apples. It's it's like the same reason in that racist people used to be racist. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, there's a few criminals that are black. So all black people are criminals. So they all deserve bad things to happen to them. It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not deserved, you know? Did do a Rochi or if you're if you're saying a Rochi deserves to burn, okay, that's one thing. If you're saying some of his ancestors that were bad, like the ones that were poisoning some of the other uh clans, yeah. All of them though, you know what I'm saying? Like that's kind of how Conjuro Conjuro turned bad, because he was just a performer and his family got killed. They I don't think they were doing anything necessarily bad un, uh, other than being Kurizumi, I, it's, it's, it's kind of messed up. Bang! We see the shamisen being played, played, and it says second hour of the bird, the fire festival. And we see Otoko next to Hiyori. Says waning crescent moons gather at the lonely port at night. A tale of wondrous valor and darling revenge, or daring revenge. The hope for day come at last for the great and noble clan stands tall once again. Crowd is cheering. And then we get a shot of Momonosuke with all his subordinates behind him. And it says, this has been the saga of mighty samurai regaining their lost glory to shine as before. That's all the time we have today. While our ways might part for now, we see uh, Kinemon Yamato and Momonosuke walking back to the flower capital. It says, Lord Momonosuke, Lord Shogun. I think that's the people talking. And Momonosuke says, so where shall we fly this flag? And then we see the curtain close and it says, may our paths cross again someday, somewhere. The end to be continued. And it doesn't look like we got a break. But it looks like we're officially at the end of the Wino arc. Yeah, man, 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 man. Um, so, 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 all right. Oh, uh, so we're finally at the end of Wino. <sighs> finally at the end of Wino. So, all right, about the chapter, about the chapter. All right, so we started off with, we started this chapter off with the cover page. Let's talk about the cover page real quick. Because now Caesar has come into the equation. My guess is that Caesar is going to help the Vin Smokes. And he's going to be enough to get them to escape. Because I don't think Caesar wants to fight Katakuri. But I do think he will maybe create like some type of fog. And get the Vin Smoke out of there or something. I'm not too sure. But I think Caesar is going to help turn the, ta turn the tide in favor of the Vin Smokes. To allow them to eventually escape, you know, because I didn't see, I don't really see the Vince Smokes getting out of this situation with Katakuri and nothing. I just don't, you know, I think Katakuri is going to be too much for the Vince Smokes. Now you're adding oven. Plus, if if it's a drawn out fight, more of uh, Big Mom's kids could come in and join the fray as well. Like, da F I think Dafuku was in Wano, or he was in Wano, so. I don't know if he could help, but whoever's there could eventually help Katakuri and Oven. And if that happens, the chances of the Vince Smoke winning are even going to be less likely. Because now you're dealing with you're dealing with Katakuri, Oven, and whoever else. And even if they're fodder characters, they could be enough to make the Vince Smoke's job just a little harder. You know, just a little harder. So Caesar. I think is going to help the Vin Smokes and maybe they'll escape. Maybe they will escape. Maybe the Vin Smokes realize that they, they're not able to beat Katakuri. So this is going to be a great moment to escape, which now it creates a new, a new dynamic, right? A new 
thing. Caesar with the Ven Smokes, right? Caesar and Judge coming back together, possibly, right? Like, we talk about the reformation of the Rocks Pirates, which we kind of got a little bit of that in Wano. We got Kaido and Big Mom creating an alliance. Like, two Rocks members joining an alliance. So, could we possibly get somewhat of a reformation of the Mads science group, right? Judge, Caesar, uh, I mean, Vegapunk, I don't think we'll probably join because, you know, Vegapunk's at the moment, at least as far as we know, he's loyal to the world government, you know, but we don't really know the dynamics of that relationship with the, with Vegapunk and the world government. They could be keep, they could be like, keeping their him there against his will, like maybe threatening him, saying like, we'll kill your family or something. Like maybe he works there against his will. You know, like we see Vegapunk, he 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 kind of went against the world government by allowing Kuma to do what he did. So there could be, Vegapunk could be kind of a, a gray area, right? Like he could have some good in him to where he does things that go against the world government at times if he sees fit i don't know we don't know i don't really want to talk too much about that because i don't know how they we haven't got anything about vegapunk but we could get kind of an alliance with judge and caesar you know so if that is the case maybe they might work to concoct something that counters the ssg because we know the ssg is a is a a a project that Vegapunk has been working on that the world government, you know, when they got a hold of it, they was they seen it as like with the SSG, we no longer need the Shichibukai. Why don't you need the Shichibukai if you have the SSG? Is it because the SSG is just that strong? Whatever this project is, is is it just that dangerous? Like even even Kaido and Big Mom say like the the world government are acting cocky you know, because of possibly the SSG, right? So, and speaking of the SSG, a lot of people talk about Mihawk and that scar that he has on his chest. My my guess is he might have gotten into a scuffle with the SSG. And though he may have came out of that, like maybe he came out victorious, maybe the SSG was just that strong to have give someone like Mihawk a, 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 a injury. Right, and if that's the case, that just that's a way to showcase how strong the SSG is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they couldn't beat Mihawk, you know, the world's strongest swordsman, but they was able to injure him. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of my that's kind of what I believe when people ask me, "Hey, what you think of that scar on Mihawk?" From what we know, there wasn't nobody of any note that went to go fight or capture Mihawk. You know, anybody of note, like we don't know of any admirals going after Mihawk. We don't know of any um I don't I don't like they didn't say they sent anybody of any note. And I think admirals would be the only per people fitting to go fight Mihawk. But you know, Kizaro was at Mary Joa. Uh Fujitara was or no, Kizaro was at uh, Kizaro and Akaino was at Marine Corps headquarters. Fujitara and uh, Green Bull was at Mary Joa during Reverie. So it's like, who could they have sent? My guess is it's the SSG. You know, like you can't go after Mihawk with some bums. So maybe go try to see what the SSG could do against somebody like Mihawk. And even if they failed, you know, it still probably came back and shown that they're capable what they're capable of and what they might need to improve upon like what vegapunk might need to improve upon so just saying just keep that in mind and now that if we get like a uh caesar and a judge alliance a caesar and judge alliance maybe they could come up with something to counter the ssg for like Luffy's alliance, you know, because I could kind of see Caesar being like Team Luffy at this point, because he he was kind of acting sad when they did their little split and goodbyes and everything. Judge, 
connection with Sanji, right? I think that still kind of need to be, there still needs to be some closure with that where they need to get past all this and judge might have to apologize and, you know, give some explanation to Sanji and everything. Sanji's going to have to be able to forgive. Judge might have to make Sanji another raid suit. Just saying, and if they come back into the picture as allies to the Straw Hats, maybe they might have something to counter the SSG, which could prove to be a very powerful asset to the world government. But yeah, so, you know, we also get this, this whole chapter was kind of talked about from the perspective of this guy narrating the play where he talks about everything that happened in this big battle of, of the Yonko versus the straw hat pirate ninja Alliance. It was told, it was kind of told in the play talked about Odin and Kaido coming and the press and wine on everything and how Kaido's support or how Odin subordinates came back from the past and recruited some help to, defeat Kaido in Orochi. And um, we also get Momonosuke pretty much rushing off with Yamato and Kinemon to go meet up with the Straw Hats. And the whole time, Momonosuke and Kinemon just talking all this mess like, how dare they do this and disrespect me? I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. And, and Kinemon like, if they disrespect you, Shogun, I might have to do, I might have to kill Luffy. I might have to do it. But then when he get there, we got Momonosuke crying on his knees. Saying, oh, don't leave. Her. <laughs> and we also learned that Yamato is staying in Wano, which I'm kind of disappointed in. Because it's like, I just think we need that, that final member of the Straw Hats. I think it's time. And I feel as though if Oda was going to pull the trigger on giving, a nut, like having that last member of the Straw Hats, it would have happened. You know what I'm saying? Why do I think there has to be another member of the Straw Hats? It has to match Blackbeard. Because we got Blackbeard, and then we have his 10th Titanic captains. And, um, and he still has one captain that has not been revealed. So he just has nine other crewmates, or nine commanders, which you could say. And there's still a 10th one that's still a mysterious one. Could be Caribou. Probably not. I hope not. I hope not Caribou. I hope not Caribou. Unless Caribou is like became strong all of a sudden. I don't know. But one thing I say, could be Zebek. Could be. I kind of think maybe Blackbeard's trying to bring back Zebek. That's I'm just saying. He's trying to bring back Zebek. And with Gecko Moria could potentially be the key that he need to bring back Zebek. Just saying, just putting that out there. Just putting that out there. Um, but we got Luffy, and then he has nine crewmates. It's ten straw hats all together, but I'm talking about Luffy and then the uh his ten captains, you could say, right? Zoro, Sanji, um, Jimbe, Brook, Ro uh, Robin, Nami, Usopp. Chopper, no, nah, man, uh, Frankie, Frankie, okay, yeah, Frankie, so that's nine, that's nine, so he just needs that tenth, that last one, that last one, baby, that last one, so it's going to be Luffy versus Blackbeard, and it's going to be the ten uh, Straw Hat Commanders, you could say, versus the ten Blackbeard, the ten Titanic captains of Blackbeard's crew, just saying, when it, at, at the end, for for the One Piece, just saying, just saying. But yeah, Yamato stand, which kind of, okay, I guess. Can't, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm a little disappointed, but it is what it is. Then, uh, then we finally get shipped off. Then it's finally, hey, we're leaving Wano, baby. We are leaving Wano. We got Kid, Luffy, and Law all going their separate ways. They pretty much say, look, look, if we meet each other again, it's not going to be on friendly ter terms. Somebody 
could potentially die, you know, and Luffy, and everybody like, okay, it is what it is. And so they're off on, they're off set, set sail and they're supposed to go to Hakumai, which is where that little lift is that, you know, a ship can go in and then, you know, it brings the ship down. So then they could safely lead, exit Wano. But here goes kid, right? Here go kid. Oh, you guys going to take the lift, huh? Oh, safe, huh? Secure. Okay, you little cowards. And then, you know, Luffy and Law are like, uh-uh, uh-uh, can't do it. We going off the cliff, baby. We going off the fucking cliff. That's what they did. <laughs> that is what they did. And, you know, of course, the other straw has like, yo, what are we doing? What y'all doing? Stop this. Stop this madness. But, hey, what can you do when Luffy is your captain? Law, that's a little unlike Law, though. But, you know, that ego, it was more of an ego thing with Law. Which is still kind of unlike him. He's, he's more of a, you know, grounded thinker, you know. But if you got two guys that are just very ego driven, you couldn't be the only one to be like, well, I'm going to go take the safe route. So Law kind of had to be ego driven, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, and then we got, uh, the moment where the guy's telling the story and he talks about how Orochi got burned and then the, the famous words where he already said is Kirizumi are meant to burn, which is kind of mirroring Oda, Odin's flashback when he said uh, Odin is meant to boil, right? Now, look. I'm just saying, like that's kind of it's kind it's kind of a cruel thing to say a little bit, you know. It's like they're not all Kazumi are bad, you know. The ones that we've seen, so, and some of the ones in history that kind of led to this point. Sure, if you want to say they deserve to burn, I get it. But there are there are some Kazumi that might be good people, right? They're, they might have been like Kondro's family were just performers, from what we've seen, you know. Could they have been bad? Possibly. I don't know, but if they were just street performers all their life and that's all they did their whole life, it's hard to say that they were bad people and that they deserved to burn, but they were killed and that caused Kondro to be warped and want to get seek revenge and do what he did, which was betray Odin or go in as a spy and then betray him, right? So it's like hate begets, begets hate. You know, and a lot of, a lot of the, cause the, a lot of the Koski weren't clean in this whole thing. If they're out there killing just any old Kazumi, just for the sake of them being Kazumi, that's how, that's how like racism is, is justified, right? That's how racist people justify their hate for other races. Like, oh, well that group was, you know, they did this. So they all deserve to do, to, to suffer. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah, so, that was that. And then, you know, we kind of get a shot of all the, the, uh, the, we get a shot of Momonosuke and all his retainers, you know, and then we pretty much end the chapter and officially end the arc. So, we're out of Wano. Great arc. Love the arc. It was a little long, yeah, it, it was long. There was some parts that dragged on, which I feel as though could have been cut, could have been, like, trimmed. And there's some stuff I feel as though should have been added, and no, some of those other stuff should have been um, trimmed, right? So, but yeah, that's pretty much the chapter right there. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Also, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Comment, let me know what you thought of the chapter, what you... What's your opinion on my chapter reaction? Do you agree or disagree with anything that I've said? Also, follow me on Twitch if you want to catch my live streams. Follow my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and join the Discord. Hey, 
Make sure you join that Discord. I do discussions live, stream discussions, and you could potentially be a part of one of them. Join the community. Anyway, it's your boy Sean Peter Blumfgott, and I'm out of here. Peace.